Soft winds blow through canopy loads all the way to Thomasville. Their native names written on the land echo through the red clay hills. Where the scent of long leaf float and pine reach up on past that Georgia line. Stroll through Tallahassee town or southern Appalachia bound. Take the local routes and journey down the roads we call our Spring is a season when you can see all types of baby wildlife in our area, but sometimes these animals are orphaned, abandoned, injured, or just need a little bit of help. Enter the St. Francis Wildlife Association here in Gadsden County. WFSU's Mike Plummer had the chance to look at this organization's efforts to rehabilitate all types of wild injured animals. 35 minutes northwest of Tallahassee, in rural Gadsden County sits the St. Francis Wildlife Association. The good folks at St. Francis have been healing and rehabilitating injured animals of the wild variety since 1978. It started in, in a woman's backyard in Tallahassee, Mary Jane Shaw Mahoney. Um, and it grew. People brought her more animals. And so it was incorporated. and. This 35-acre um, beautiful piece of land that we sit on was donated. And it, ironically enough, it used to be a hunt camp. Well, we have two objectives, uh, wildlife rehabilitation and education. Um, I'm in charge of the wildlife rehabilitation part, which is taking care of orphaned and injured and sick animals, wild animals with the goal of returning them back into the wild. Now some might wonder why we should bother to help these animals. This is the answer to that. Most of the animals we admit are injured because of human activities, directly or indirectly. Um, hit by cars, poison, a tangle in fishing line. Then we have our pets, you know, it's a big problem. Cat attacks is a major, major cause for all the little animals we get, little birds and squirrels and possums, many are attacked by cats. Dog attacks. Uh, dog, uh, my dog found this little turtle and he thought it was a bone in shoe all over the poor little animal. Um, so most of the injuries, you know, we are the ones that are causing them. That's why it's so important for us to give them a second chance because if it wasn't for us, they would not be here in the first place. So this so is a delivery of an injured animal. There yes. are three of them, it looks like. Yes. Uh-huh. You're fine. The same? <laughs> Didn't know they put water in there, so I soaked my pants. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and he's, the box is overkill. Oh, it's a tiny dog. Thank you. When they're at our facility, uh, we have to be very careful to keep them wild. Uh, they're not pets, and the little animals will get used to you if you talk to them, if you pet them, if you not treat them like pets, they will get used to you. And that will not be good when you let them go, that they could not survive if they're acting, you know, like a human, and they're used to people. Uh, and the adult animals, they get very stressed out when you touch them, when you handle them, when you talk to them. So we avoid that, totally avoid it. We handle an animal only because it needs to be fed or it needs to be medicated. It needs to be clean. Then we leave them alone. Now in addition to wild animal rehab, St. Francis also aspires to educate people, to coexist with the wildlife around them. I do about 70 education programs in the schools every single year. Um, I take mostly the birds of prey and reptiles and I teach um, children about their uh, each bird's different adaptations and um, how it survives in our environment and the problems that they face and also what we can do to help protect them. We also do programs at Rotary Club meetings and Na and as I mentioned, nurseries like native nurseries. So we reach a lot 
um, of people in our area. And I think because of this, in the last nearly three decades, the level of consciousness about wildlife is higher. Every species we get is different from the other one, so you need to learn very specific ways to handle, to treat, to house that animal that is going to be very different to the other animal you got the day before. Yes, every species needs different things. So we have to constantly, you know, be learning and updating our knowledge and go to conferences and reading and studying. We encourage people if they find injured, sick, um, or orphan wildlife, if they can't reunite the orphan baby with its mother, to bring it to us. And some animals present inherent dangers to people, so it is often better to call St. Francis before you intervene. Um, how to handle them is very important. They can be dangerous. Uh, when they call us about a, a raccoon, or they call us about injured heron, a gray blue heron, we don't tell them just go ahead and grab it because we know it's very dangerous. You need to know what you're doing. If they find a rabies vector, such as a raccoon or a fox or a bat, people should never touch those animals, not even babies, because if the animal uh, nips them or scratches them, even accidentally, that animal is going to have to be tested for rabies. And the only way to test an animal for rabies is to euthanize it and examine its brain tissue. People have good intentions when they're trying to help a wild animal they found. And that's awesome. And I, that's admirable. I, I like that a lot uh, of, on people. However, you know, well intentions doesn't go together with knowledge sometimes or common sense. We hope that people will understand that we share a habitat with wildlife. And the raccoons and foxes and deer and possums and squirrels are just as much a part of this habitat as we are. And they were there before we were. So it, it's up to humans to learn how to coexist and live in harmony with wildlife. On the wild side, in Gadsden County, for WFSU, I'm Mike Plummer.